The first rule in investment is don't lose. And the second rule in investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. We, we care a lot about the price. We do not care about the next 12 months. But are you surprised at how long this economy has been expanding? I've been surprised by all kinds of things in the last 10 years about the economy. I mean, I, uh, I don't think there was any economist I've ever read that uh, talked about negative interest rates uh, for long periods of time. I mean, if you go back and read Keynes or you read, you read Samuelson, you read any of them, they do not get into a negative rate environment. I think now there's still 11 trillion that's, uh, of government debt around the world that's at a negative rate. So we've never seen it before. Something different is happening, but something different happens all the time. So, uh, uh, and that's one reason economic predictions just don't enter into our decisions. Charlie Munger, my partner, and I, in you know 54 years now, uh, we've never made a decision based on an economic prediction. We, we make business predictions about what individual businesses will do over time, and we compare that to what we have to pay for them. But we have never said yes to something because we thought the economy was going to do well in the next year or two years, and we've never said no to anything because we were right in the middle of a panic even if the price was right. There's so many variables. I mean, in, in the hard sciences, you know, you know that you know, if an apple falls from a tree, that it isn't gonna change over the centuries because of anything or political developments or 400 other variables that go in. But when you get into economics, uh, there's so many variables. And, and the truth is, you've got to expect good times and bad times in business. And if you, if you were to buy an auto dealership and you're, you know, wherever you live locally or a McDonald's franchise or anything like that, you wouldn't try and time the purchase. You'd try and make the right purchase at the right price and you want to be sure you got a good business. But you wouldn't say I'm going to buy it because growth this year is going to be 3% instead of 2.8% or something of the sort. Well, if you have to closely follow a company, you shouldn't own it. Really? No. I mean, if you, I mean, if you, if you buy a business, if you buy a farm, you know, you go up and look, you know, every couple of weeks to see how far the corn is up and, uh, you know, you worry too much about whether somebody says this is going to be a year of low prices because exports are being affected or anything like that. You know, you buy a farm and you hold it for, I've got one farm that I bought in the 1980s and my son runs it, but I've, I've been there once, you know, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't grow faster if I go and stare at it, you know, I can't cheer for it, you know, more effort, more effort or something like that. So Apple's kind of like the moment. Well, it's, it's a, it's a long-term investment. And, and if you own if you own the, the best auto dealership in town, uh, the best brand, and had something good running it, you wouldn't drop by every day and say, you know, how many people have come in today? Or, you know, I think interest rates are going up a little. Maybe we'll slow down our sales or anything. No, you buy it knowing there's 365 days a year. And, you're going to own it for 20 years, so that's 7,300 days, and you know they're going to things are going to be <laughs> different from day to day and year to year. You shouldn't buy it if the day to day stuff is important. But if our stock, if I think the stock, and my partner Charlie Munger think the stock is selling uh, below intrinsic business value, uh, we will buy in stock. So it obviously was at that point. Well, we we thought so. Yeah, yeah, but but. Uh, you know, what's really intriguing is, is when it goes down a lot. I mean, uh, when, when you're buying dollar bills for, for 60 or 70 cents, which periodically you get a chance to do in stocks, then, you know, you know it, assuming you've got the, the cash, you don't want to ever, you know, get so that, uh, that some, some surprise could really take you out in some way. But if we've got excess cash, we'll buy it as fast as we can. You know, if you and I own a McDonald's, franchise together and it's worth a million dollars and you own 50% of it and you come to me and you say, I'll sell out for 400,000, you know, I'll buy you out. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. 
because this is not a business where you take polls. It's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right.